everyone. I'm here with my really good friend, Kara Hogan. Kara played lacrosse at Mary Washington, and she also has been running Edge Lacrosse Training, an awesome lacrosse company here in Baltimore for the last five years. And the reason I know Kara is because when she was younger, and I know you're thinking like her and I, we look the same age. I understand. But when she was younger, I actually coached her in <laughs> soccer. <laughs> We do that. And, um, <laughs> so today, what we're going to talk about is we're joining forces, champion soccer training, edge lacrosse training. We're joining forces to talk about a really hot topic here, especially in Baltimore, which is the multi-sport athlete. You know, when to specialize, how long should your kids be playing multiple sports? You know, how long can they play at a high level? And, and all of these questions, I think, that are, are really you know, difficult subjects and, and things that people are always trying to figure out. Um, so hopefully just listening to Kara and I talk about our experience in coaching kids in soccer and lacrosse can help help you maybe uh, make some decisions for, for yourself and your family. So thanks for joining me, Kara. Yeah, thanks for having me, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> I was thinking maybe you could start off by telling us about your experience just as a, a player yourself from growing yeah, up, definitely. like what you participated in. Yeah. So obviously I played lacrosse um, competitively, both, you know, for school, club and additional training. Um, you know, I started that in middle school, which was actually considered late, um, but obviously loved it right away. And since, you know, Allie coached me, I also played soccer. <laughs> Um, and I was a competitive swimmer growing up. Um, we swam, you know, my brothers and I both all swam all summer, but then we also did winter training, which is pretty intense. Um, you know, swimming in the winter, usually my that were pretty competitive. Both of my brothers ended up uh, swimming in college. So I always thought, oh, maybe, you know, I'll hang on to that. You know, I love swimming. I was actually good at it. So I felt like I should keep it going. Um, and then obviously those, those three sports, it was a lot, but I enjoyed all of them. So in high school um, was really when I had to start making decisions on, you know, uh, dropping, I guess, a sport or two sports. And what gave me the biggest, I guess, challenge with that is like, I didn't want to ever consider myself a quitter. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't quit. I was someone that would commit to something and, and fully commit. Um, but when lacrosse, and by that time, see. you had put so much time into right. those sports. Yeah. It had a yes. big investment. So much time and, you know, really felt the most natural when I played lacrosse, but kind of was like good at swimming. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because like, I, I don't swim anymore, but, um, and then uh, to be honest, you play a huge role in me, like continuing to play soccer. Um, so again, like time commitment, and there was like a certain type of love to each sport, um, which made that tough, but lacrosse recruiting really became, you know, it's starting earlier now, but junior season, like heading into your junior season was really when it started um, when I was in high school. So that's when I made the decision to stop swimming competitively. Like I still swim. actually, you know what? I didn't swim in the summer either because the summer is when we had all the tournaments and, you know, it, it was a tough decision, but I knew that lacrosse was going to be where I, you know, flourished and committed myself to. At that time, I was still playing soccer and competitive. I played for Premier Soccer Club. So I was doing both lacrosse and soccer club. Um, they did not really conflict ever. Um, again, summer was really the big season for lacrosse. Um, but, you know, at that time, when I was getting recruited, my goals were, you know, not that clear. Um, so that's where I give advice to my younger athletes, like make your goals very clear where you want to play, what level, because I was still so invested in both sports that I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go somewhere where I can play both. Like, this is all I know. You know, I don't know what it's like to play just lacrosse or just soccer. Um, and again, like I was, playing well at both and putting in time and enjoying myself committing to that. So junior year was still playing both sports competitively, investing a lot of time. Um, 
And again, you know, that's where my goal kind of turned into, I'll play division three competitive. And, you know, I've heard a lot about athletes that can play both sports division three. I mean, there's a lot of athletes that can play division one too, but um, I figured, okay, this will give me a chance to, to play both of the sports. I ended up playing just across. Um, but I think that's a really interesting um, experience because, you know, I was split by three and then had to make, you know, stopping swimming was a pretty clear decision, um, but soccer was very iffy. <laughs> and I remember I would go to training with you and ask you, Allie, are you going to be mad at me if I don't play soccer in college? And you were like, what? <laughs> and your sunglasses like, what? Why would I be mad at you? <laughs> There's this like weird small part of me that felt like I had to continue with soccer because I like loved you so much. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Try to keep you on the, on the good side as long as I can. Yeah, right. <laughs> so again, I think that, you know, that's, that's kind of my experience, but when it comes time to make a decision, it really did come down to like, what do you enjoy the most? Um, you know, I kind of always loved the season that was in season, like, oh, fall. I was like, yay, soccer, spring. I was like, yay, lacrosse. And um, in the fall, I would go out and do extra work, but it would be juggling, right? It would be like footwork drills, the 10 footwork drills that you gave me that I still know. Um, inside, outside, outside, inside, <laughs> cross. Hey, and my players are listening. Yes. <laughs> Rolls, <laughs> crossover roll. I know them all. Um, double outside was my favorite. Um, but in the spring, you know, I would be playing wall ball. So it just, it just was interesting that there was no question about commitment, but it was just a matter of what. And then obviously, you know, senior year, all of that turned into wall ball. <laughs> there was still some footwork with Allie though. <laughs> well, I think that's really interesting how you, you, you are going to, I'm going to share my experience in a second, but your experience is like a lot more multi-sport, like for longer than mine was. Um, when I was younger, my mom, my dad was a big soccer. I'm a dad. I'm, I love both my parents very much. You're a daddy's girl. I love a little bit of a daddy's girl growing <laughs> up, especially. And when I was younger, my dad was like a soccer nut. Like he loved soccer. He played in like the LTRC adult league. And I used to go watch his games and he coached my team and, and, uh, he never pushed it on me. He just enjoyed the sport. And I like being with my dad. And I think that just made me like it more. My mom, my mom is like a huge athlete. She, she does everything, softball, golf. Um, she signed me up for lacrosse. She signed me up for ice skating. She signed me up for, I mean, just think of a sport, tennis. In the summer, summer I would take uh, tennis lessons and go to tennis camp like four weeks of the summer when I was younger. I mean, if you can imagine like a parent that is like a big time sports person is my mom. And she signed me up for like everything under the sun, name a sport. I played it. Okay. <laughs> but soccer with my dad was like the consistent thing. My dad would like come to our other stuff, but you know, right. his thing was soccer that he did with us more so. So <clears throat> I enjoyed everything. And actually through middle school, I was a big lacrosse player. Um, I, I played for LTRC lacrosse. Um, but when I, when I went to high school, my freshman year, um, I made varsity lacrosse at McDonough and I was a starter at either center or attacking wing. Are those still positions? Uh, now they consider, now there's no wing. There's no wing. So you would have been the draw specialist or low draw attacker. Draw specialist. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know where I would fall now, but at the time, You'd be I was a mitty, varsity so. starter as a freshman, which was I think, pretty good. I mean, indicative that I was like a, a good lacrosse player when I was young. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Right. So, um, I but but soccer was like my thing, and I always considered like other sports that I played for like they were my for fun sports, and soccer was like my passion, like in my heart, you know, in a different way, you know. So. I can remember at the beginning of the season in my freshman year, I said to my lacrosse coach, like, coach, I really want to try out and I really want to play. But starting on Mondays, I have ODP practice and I have to be able to get to that practice, which means I'm going to have to miss our, our lacrosse practice here at school to, to start, you know, going to those practices. So the first Monday that I miss practice at school, um, the next day, 
we had on Tuesday, we had a game against Bryn Mawr. And I will never forget this. <laughs> we had a game against Bryn Mawr. I come to the game. My coach sat me on the bench the entire game. We lost. And then after the game, she proceeded to berate me in front of the entire team for like no less than 15 minutes about my lack of commitment and losing the uh, game was my fault. And I'm this like little freshman <laughs> on a team of like all these older people. And like, I've, I'm just thinking to myself, like, I just want to play soccer. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I just wanted to play soccer. And I, I, did, I really enjoyed lacrosse, obviously. That's so why I went out for the team. But I was like upfront with her about my schedule and everything. And the minute that I missed something. So um, that was my last, that was my last lacrosse experience because I quit the team after that. And I was like, I was like, I mean, not, I don't, I don't want to be a quitter either, Kara, yeah. but We're in my mind, I was like, nothing is going to interfere with my soccer crazy lady. <laughs> so I just, that's when, so when I was a freshman, that's when I started focusing on soccer, but I like, I really loved, my mom really did kind of instill this, like just love for activity and sports in me. And one of the sports I always really liked to play was basketball too. So I actually played LTRC in-house basketball until I was 17. You know, I'm like <laughs> off playing with the national team with soccer and, and doing all of like my cool soccer stuff. And then anytime, you know, anytime I had my free Saturday or my free weekday practice, I'd be like a basketball practice point guard, baby. <laughs> we're team yellow this year. Yeah. I think we were purple just to be fair. Okay. But anyways, so I, I mean, I always like sports and I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of like encouraging kids to, to try a lot of different sports too, because I enjoy doing that. I still tip today, will go out and play tennis or golf or like all these sports that, you know, I know how to ice skate. My, my mom had me in ski lessons. I mean, like, like I said, name it, but as an adult, yeah. like I can do all that stuff. You know, my husband yeah. didn't do all that stuff. So, so I when see. I talk about it, he's like. <laughs> He's like, oh man, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know, that's what he, he, he gets bummed out when I skunk him in tennis, 10 games to zero. Sorry, Dave, if you're listening to this, <laughs> but I have some skills because my mom had me do all these other sports. So I'm big, I, I have a big a supporter of like getting your kids into a lot of different things because these are things like, like, like for me, you can do this for the rest of your life. Like enjoy this stuff, you know, yeah. and you learn it at a young age you know, makes you like able to do it when you're older, you have like that fundamental skill level down. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you didn't know I played basketball that long, did you? No, I really did it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> 17, anyways, <wow. laughs> um, so let's get into like, us talking about this kind of multi-sport thing here in Baltimore. Um, yes. What do you think is some of the the trends that we're that we're starting to see now as far as um you know like like you said you had to make a decision when you were a junior um and then mm -hmm. I made that decision earlier I was feeling the pressure right at the start of high school um so what are you what are some of the trends that you're seeing for kids that are, are playing today yeah well I think lacrosse specifically it's been kind of like a roller coaster because a couple of years ago, they actually allowed recruitment to be as early as eighth grade, um, which was crazy all around all of the coaches. No one liked it, but it was at the end of the day, you know, Maryland's recruiting. So Duke has to recruit. So USC has to recruit. So there were eighth grade girls who knew where they were going to college, but they didn't know where they were going. They were going to high school. And so it was just kind of this like universal, like, what are we doing? Why am I recruiting like 12 and 13 year old girls for my college team? Um, so thankfully the NCAA put a stop to that. And now it is September 1st, your junior year, a coach can, can contact you and say, I'm interested in your, you know, your skill. I want you to be on my team. So September 1st, junior year is really like the date to work towards now. I'm working but that backwards. doesn't stop like the more, the, the, those like upper, upper echelon players from getting recruited earlier. Right. Yeah. Like they, right. they will still get recruited younger probably. So you can't no. actually like, like a coach, like couldn't, it's against the rules. Like, um, for example, that, like, like a behind the scenes type thing. No, there's like no behind the scenes. I mean, besides like they can, they can say, I want you to fill out our questionnaire. Uh, it's, and, it's, you know, it's opposite in soccer. There's a lot of behind, behind the scenes, like 
like the coach can't talk to you, but they'll send someone else to come talk to you. Like, yeah. Only for that, like t- top, like 5% players. Right. But well, ahead. I'm sure at the end of the day, I'm sure there's something going on, right. <laughs> that I'm not seeing, but, um, sophomore year is really when you put in, you know, trying to get film and you're already emailing coaches because you can email them all you want. So I think freshman year is really like, I, I think a mixture of eighth grade and freshman year, depending on like the skill and, you know, how elite the player is. I think that's really when like decisions need to be made. Um, for example, I have a lot of players that are obviously lacrosse players, but play a second sport. Like how you said, like, that's my fun sport or, um, they, you know, because of all the research that says don't specialize, they feel like they need another sport because they don't want to just play that one, or maybe they do, but their parents don't want them to play that one. Um, like how you were playing basketball and you would go and do these other things. Um, I see a lot of that happening around eighth grade, freshman year. Um, I do also, you know, occasionally see players that want to play just lacrosse younger, but again, like their parents kind of draw a line there and say, you know, you're 12, you're 13, you don't know what you want, or, you know, maybe you, you do, but you have to continue playing other sports to, you know, it's called like fill the gap. Right. Um, and I do think that like, in the past 10 years, there's been a huge influx of research and suggestions from, you know, exercise science and coaches. And you hear it all the time. Oh, you know, like um, people recruit or, you know, when you, when you have a job interview, it'll be helpful to say you were a multi-sport athlete and, you know, like coaches recruit multi-sport athletes and um, all that thing, all that stuff. I think that's, you know, been more and more, I guess, common knowledge recently, the, the advantages of being multi-sport so I think that's interesting um because I do think in the lacrosse especially Maryland the lacrosse with NCAA allowing legitimate commitment recruiting at eighth grade that kind of that kind of set everyone off (laughs) and that was a little crazy so now we're reining it back in so I do see that eighth grade freshman year kind of specialization or making decisions and again just kind of like ranking sports which I think is good Cause like yeah. you were incredible. And I think part of the reason is cause you knew young, like soccer's my thing. I'm going to commit to it. You are maybe. <laughs> current, current tense, present tense. <laughs> well, I think what, one thing that you said is really interesting. Um, you're talking about the research <laughs> and the age and mentioning, you mentioned eighth grade. Um, but research studies that I've read have shown that, um, that kids are in what we call a sampling phase until and it can differ a little bit, you know, not by years, but maybe by a year, like more or less, but kids are in a sampling phase until 12 years old. And the experts, the research shows that until 12 years old, you should have your kids playing multiple sports for Mm -hmm. many reasons, mental, Mm -hmm. um, mental burnout, being able to be a part of different teams, you know, to, to prevent mental burnout. Also, one of the big reasons is, and I think that people don't really consider this as much, is that development of the body, you know, right. the, the hand-eye coordination, the skills you need mm-hmm. for lacrosse are different from soccer, are different from basketball. You know, the, the court on basketball is a lot smaller. You know, the fields for lacrosse and soccer are much bigger. So the kind of movement that you do while you play is different um, mm-hmm. and, and the surface of it and everything. So um, I think the only sport that I've read that it can be beneficial to to and beneficial and not necessarily harmful as long as you don't get injured doing it at a younger age is gymnastics because that sport involves like a lot of different kinds of movements um, mm-hmm. but for general sports that most people are doing at age 12 up to age 12 specializing earlier than that and what i mean by specializing is focusing on like one sport you know mm-hmm. um, not trying to play multiple not trying to specialize in multiple sports. Like if you're playing like a a full year of lacrosse and trying to also play full year soccer, then you are getting multiple sports. Um, But Mm -hmm. when you hit 12, the research shows there's a shift in kids mentality between like 12, 13 years old, kids will um, start to decide what they prefer, what they like better. And to what you said, which I think is really interesting, you said, 
that you see kids at 12 and 13 and their pa- mm-hmm. and their parent they say they don't like a sport anymore and their parents are like no you should keep playing because you don't know what you want yet you know yeah. so you you brought that up without me even saying about that research study you know but cool. at 12 13 years old is when kids will actually start to emerge like hey i prefer this you know mm-hmm. and i think it's really important when they hit that age that parents listen to them you know mm-hmm. and <clears throat> one of the things that i see is and, and this is this is i think really really <laughs> tough it's tough for a lot of different reasons but one of the things that i see is that kids um will try to play at a very high level lacrosse team and a very high level soccer team both teams demanding commitment both teams trying to play in competitive leagues and competitive tournaments both coaches wanting full commitment you know all around and and that is i think once you start to get to that 12 13 year you know mark like towards the end of middle school that will put a ton of pressure on the kid Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's when you start missing, it's, it's really unfair to the team. So you have to consider like, what values are you teaching your child? Like, like it's okay to, to not be committed if there's something more important to you, you know, right. it's not, I don't think like a great president to set, to set, you know, unless like from the start, you're very upfront about it. Like I'll play, but this is my priority. But if you just sign up for two, like hardcore sports, and then just miss whatever you feel when you feel like it, it's not really fair to either one of your teams, Mm -hmm. you know? And and I think that is, is really tough for kids. What I would love to see more of is I, I don't mind if my, like, so the team that I coach, I would consider us like a competitive team and I expect my kids to be committed. So they're U15 and they're all freshmen going to be sophomores in high school. So, um, what I, what I don't want to discourage any of my kids from playing other sports if they want to do that. But I, I would expect them to maybe play on a lower level or a less committed team. And I would expect soccer, them not to miss soccer. If they want to play lacrosse or whatever in their own time, I don't mind. I, I mean, have fun, enjoy yourself as long as it doesn't conflict with our soccer. So it's not like I don't want kids to continue to be multi-sport athletes past a certain point. I just think that it's unreasonable for them to do that at a high level and everything because of the commitment that's expected from, yeah. from those, from those teams. What do you think? I definitely agree a million times over. I think it also like it puts the coach in a really tough position because when I was coaching club lacrosse, you know, there were certain players that, um, it was like, well, I don't know if they're going to be able to make this tournament because they do play club soccer. And, you know, like it is that, that really tough, like how committed are you? And, you know, we would preach like when you sign up again, like you, you sign up knowing that you're committed to being there. And I think it, it gets really tough. Um, specifically the girls that would miss from soccer. It was like, well, soccer is her, her bigger sport. And I'm like, okay, well that has to ask the question. Like, are you sure you want to continue doing this? Like, is it right for you? Is it right for your family? Is it right for the team? Because I'm, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't feel good to miss either. <laughs> like you shouldn't be, you know? So I think it's, it's really tough. I do think like in the past it was different. I think now, like if you are playing at a, like you said, like freshman to sophomore competitive soccer team, you have to be there. It has to be your priority. And I do think that splitting time is, is no bueno. It does put a lot of pressure on the kid. One of my kids last night at yeah. Texas was like, coach Allie, I can't. So, so one thing is that I, that I encourage a kid to do is school sports. Like if you had yeah. a school lacrosse game during soccer season and had to miss, I don't like, I think that there's participating in, in school sports is like a whole nother beast. Like you should represent your school. You should participate with your friends, you know, and for the most part, that stuff is like right after school. So for the most part, it doesn't conflict. It's not like a big conflictor. So if, if a kid wants to play a non, you know, a, a non-soccer school sport or even soccer, soccer for school could conflict, conflict with uh, club soccer. I don't mind that at all. Um, Cause I think that's important. Yeah. Um, but I do think that that um, it's like you said puts a lot of pressure on the athletes. One of my kids last night said, "I have a track meet this Saturday," and I said, "We have 
you're, you're going to miss our game. Like that's two days from now. Like you're just telling me now that you have a track meet and this is for school. So it's something that normally I would like plan around for her, but I didn't like that was last minute that she told me. And, um, and I was like, we really need you. You're going to have to try to get to our game. Like this short notice, like I can't pull up another player, you know, I really right. need you to try to be there. And you could see this girl like stressing in her face. Right. And yeah. she was like, but coach Allie, cause I think I have like a really good relationship with my players. I don't like, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm, I would definitely not consider myself like a mean or anything like that coach. I have my expectations. And then, you know, I hold that standard and then I'm like, nice and fun with them you know as long as they're not <laughs> as long as they're behaving themselves and everything's cool so she says but Allie my my track coach is is really mean <laughs> and scary and I said so what the meaner coach wins the scarier yeah. coach wins like you're gonna go track because you're more scared of her than you are of me and you feel like you can come talk to me about it that, that's not fair yeah no. <laughs> you know <laughs> so I think it's oh, I think it's, it's really tough on the kids and and you know a lot of that probably parents don't see because the at, at that age like especially once you get into I mean I would say like late into middle school and then high school for coaches it really starts to be like your relationship with the athlete the communication mm -hmm. comes more through the player than the parents the parents might say something or step in every now and then but right. I honestly can't remember the last time with my U15 girls that I had a conversation with a parent other than like small talk, walking off the field, like an actual conversation about like commitment or going to miss something or, or questions about a tournament. Cause all my girl, like the girls asked me that stuff. I communicate mm -hmm. now directly with the athletes, you know? So I think for lacrosse and soccer and all these sports, like the parents don't see the strain it can put on kids to have to juggle that because they're not the ones that have to communicate it with the coaches. Right. Yeah. I do think, you know, it is kind of a lot. And I think it's, I think it's tough at that age to say, you know, I don't want to play. I don't think all parents listen. Um, my parents were so supportive and, and, I had a seriously close relationship with my parents, especially my mom and mom's girl, daddy's girl, mom's girl. I love you too, dad. But um, my mom is so understanding of a person and with my sports. So I've really liked that 12 to 13 year old age, you know, where you start to really prefer because that's when I stopped playing basketball. Um, and it wasn't a big deal. I just, I just was like, I don't, I really don't want to like play basketball in high school. And my mom was like, okay, you don't have to you know I, and same thing like I had I had two tennis lessons with her because she played tennis and I was like I don't really think I like it she's like okay um so I think for all the parents that are listening you know have these conversations with your kids and um I do think on on one side you have the like don't specialize too early you know like power power move the parents are afraid of and that's where you need to really understand what they mean by early okay mm -hmm. like no one in fifth grade should be like, I'm going to play lacrosse at UNC and I'm not playing anything else, ever. <laughs> right? That's too young. But I, I do think, you know, there's that other side where they are like, they're doing so much. Like a lot of kids these days are so busy. My fiance, John, so he's always, you know, he wasn't an athlete. So he's always like, how did they do so much? I don't, I just would go home after school. I go hang and like go play outside. He's like, how do they go from practice to game to training to, to like a strength and conditioning coach? So I think, I think part of that is burnout overall is a very real thing. You know, you're not just going to burn out if you play one sport. You can burn out if you do too much at all. So I think those are the two sides that are interestingly battling against each other. And I do think the lacrosse community specifically is scarred from the eighth grade recruiting <laughs> still. So they want to, you know, like you said, like play basketball for your school and, you know, the footwork carries over to lacrosse, um, like go have fun at school with your friends and, and again, be a part of a team. That's something special. But I do think that there's almost like these ideologies that kind of conflict. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, that's where it's like, you need to have that relationship and conversation 
with your kids and how much do you like financially club and driving around like it's just it's a lot that you need to really you know figure out together so having that like you said like the girl can talk to you because you're approachable and you've created that relationship with your players and I hope that they feel that way with their parents um obviously (laughs) (laughs) well I think it's I think I think you hit a few things on the head there I'm curious though um there were definitely, I mean, luckily for me, I just, in my heart knew soccer was for me. Like it wasn't even right. something I had to think about, you know, but I don't think that is normally the case. You know, I think there's usually kids are like fooled because they enjoy doing different things. Um, and my parents with us always had that, like, we support you. Like they would sign it. My mom would sign us up for all this stuff, but like, ultimately it was our decision and they supported us and kind of like exactly what you said with your mom. Right. I think that for me if I was torn I feel like it might have been nice to have a little push you know from my parents like you know so I'm curious you said that you know once you got into high school and you still tried to manage playing the three sports and you're and but your mom you said you didn't want to play basketball and your mom let you drop basketball Mm -hmm. but do you think it would have been helpful if your mom maybe even planted the seed, like maybe you should think about like focusing on something, you know, or did you like, like being able to fully figure it out on your own? So I think she definitely did. Like, I think there was always like a lacrosse focus. Um, And I do think again, like you, you played a big role because I like loved you and training with you. And so this is where edge lacrosse training became because I would go home and be like, I just wish there was like a lacrosse alley is what we always said. If only there was a lacrosse alley, like it's you. I, I want to train with someone that's like exactly like that. But I, I, so it's, it's interesting. Freshman, sophomore year is really when I started saying that, like, I, I need alley and I need like training. <laughs> so if I, if Allie was like the lacrosse trainer, I would go to Allie and then that would probably like have soccer go, which is really interesting. I like, so I'm not saying it was all about you. This sounds so weird as I say it out loud, but. Well, I mean, having the coach is, can really impact a decision too, which you see with yeah. kids, like they'll say, I hear kids all the time. Like, I don't like lacrosse. Why don't you like lacrosse? My coach was My so coach was mean awesome. and it has yeah. actually nothing to do with the sport, you know, mm-hmm. or soccer, whatever it is. It's nothing to do with the sport. It has everything to do completely with their relationship with that coach and whether they made it a good experience or a bad experience. Yeah, I actually train a player who is going to definitely play like top 10, 20, D1. And she told me just the other day, because I said, do you play, do you play the sports? And she said, well, I used to play soccer. And I was like a big soccer player, but my coach was horrible. So I chose lacrosse. So that's really interesting too. I think there's a lot of factors and gosh knows how long I can talk about how important a coach is. (laughs) I think it's like, just so important, like your relationship that you have and um, how that can change your your point of view about a sport. Um, the interesting thing for me that I think about often, not that much, but when I reflect, I think about this is like how you, how you were obviously this like amazing soccer player and you knew young, that was your passion. Like when you said that was my passion, I'm like, yeah, lacrosse is my passion. How did I not like, see it so passionately when I was younger and when I really like my passion for lacrosse grew the second that it was just lacrosse like when I was committed to play in college I was like this is it like I'm gonna be the best I'm gonna be the best teammate I'm gonna constantly train I'm gonna constantly you know have the best stick and that's like it just like went way up and I remember thinking like you know to be honest people would always say like, why didn't you play D1 or why didn't you consider D1? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't, I just didn't. I just always thought I'd play both. (laughs) So it's interesting if like that decision was made a couple of years ago or a couple of years before, I do think like, I, I, I don't know. I could have played somewhere else. I I said, I could have changed your trajectory (laughs) with lacrosse. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. And I just like my like relationship with lacrosse, like almost, I almost consider it like beginning, like as a college athlete, like I grew so much instantly. It was crazy. And I became like truly committed. Like I remember in high school, 
going to, well, your camp is another thing, but I remember just running sprints and being like, I, I hate this. Like, I, I remember like just everyone, everyone says they hate running, but I, I, I didn't really like get it. Like I would do it. it more than the average person. I hated it more than the average person. And I like, didn't like, I didn't do the visualization and like the passionate, like pump up, like before, during a run and, you know, the summer before training for college, like I was really into it. It flipped. I'm like, I want to train. I want to run. I want to do push-ups. I want to do sit-ups, like, like all the hard things, the medicine ball, I want to sprint on the turf. And like, I actually like learned to like get that love hate, like. But this is a really good point because what you're saying is like the moment that you, that you stop like letting yourself being pulled in different directions because you do like this and you do like this and you really like, this is what I'm most passionate about. And you put your commitment and focus into it. It completely changed your experience. Like you loved it even more and your passion grew. And obviously you love it because you run a lacrosse training company now, you know, so it kind of changed your trajectory from there on. And I think, you know, with the parents, like at that age saying like, oh, we should try to keep them in those sports, not really letting them flourish in one that they particularly like, you know, can be, you know, more detrimental. And like when my dad coached me, and this is in soccer, but I remember when my dad coached me and this is like when I was doing all these different sports and my dad said, like, like after this season, I'm not going to coach you anymore. Mm-hmm. At the same time, he brought a box of t-shirts home for that he got for my little brother's team that he was coaching. So it was like a double burn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I remember like my dad saying like, Allie, I'm going to talk, you know, it's time for you to go play for like a, a club team, with other players who are more focused on soccer. And, and I think my dad knew that I was like outgrowing his ability to coach me and he wanted to put me in a better environment. And so this is like, I'm like aging out of LTRC soccer and, and playing travel for my dad. And he's like, you're going to go play for this club team. I like went out in the front lawn, like a cartoon character, like threw myself down and like started like, (laughs) like throwing a tantrum. I was like, this is not fair, daddy. Dad. I was like, so upset. I like, couldn't believe my dad, my dad is all I knew. Like he coached me all growing up and I, and I love playing for LTRC soccer. I had no idea. So anyways, I go play for, I go out and play for this other team and like, it couldn't have been like five minutes into practice. And I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) You know, cause like every single person there, they were like all about soccer. Everybody was so into it. And I didn't realize that it was going to be like, like, I didn't even, you know, you don't even know what the difference is until you're around it. Like my, my travel team friends, like they were into soccer, but everybody played other sports and we came together and we had fun and we played hard, but I was with this team and it was like a whole other level of like soccer. And I was like, Oh, my people, yes. <laughs> you know, and I was like, loved it so much. And, and to, like the same thing for you is like, as soon as I was in the environment with other like-minded people and like a more like a focused commitment on soccer, it was like from that point on is like it really took off because I remember that year I went out and tried out for the uh the Maryland State ODP team that year that I had like made this change and I didn't make it and then um and then I played at this level learning from these coaches and the next year I made the team and then the following year I made the national team so I went from playing LTRC soccer my dad moved me into this club program where initially when I first started, I wasn't even good enough to make the state team. And right there within two years, I was on the U S national team, you know, obviously had I not, my dad not made that change for me and put me in that better environment around those soccer players and those experienced coaches and all of that. And allowed me to like, for you, like flourish in my sport, Mm -hmm. I would never have had the career that I had. Like wow. if my parents were like, you're really, cause I, what, like I said, I played varsity lacrosse, you know, um, in my freshman year, you know, if my parents were like, you're really good at lacrosse and you're really good at basketball and you're really good at soccer, you should stick with all three. If they had made me do that and didn't let me just like flourish in soccer, mm-hmm. I would never have had the career that I had. That's and really kid, interesting. You wouldn't know any different, you know, yeah. your parents are who sign you up for stuff. You kind mm-hmm. of know about other teams, but not really, you know? Right. So, 
It's really interesting too. This this is not the most relatable experience, um, but I think like now that I'm just really thinking about it too. My sophomore, my entire sophomore year, I was out with a severe concussion. That's when I saw a sports psychiatrist because I was so concerned about return to play. So I was playing lacrosse, got checked in the head, and couldn't play for another nine months. So that like whole year, where for my lacrosse players listening now, this is like when you're really trying to get film and making your list of schools, I, I couldn't even run. I couldn't even exercise like migraines every day. So that was just like a really interesting <clears throat> time to get that kind of hurt because I was so out from both sports that I think part of it was when I could return, I was so excited to be back in as much as possible. So I do think that that like changed the trajectory too, because you know, if freshman year, I decided, you know, lacrosse is what's up, <laughs> let's do this, then I do think, it, I, I think it would have changed a lot. Um, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, oh man, like I could have been great. And I'm not trying to say that. I just, <laughs> I just think um, I had a really rare, weird timed injury. And I think, you know, instead of like where a lot of athletes maybe are making that decision. Should I play club lacrosse or club soccer? Or should I, you know, be an attacker instead of a midi? Or should I like go sign up with like the strength and conditioning coach to become stronger and faster? I was working with a vision therapist and a sports psychiatrist on like, you know, basic things and setting goals. Like I want to be able to run a mile in this amount of time for when I return to play. So I think the goals really took the back seat and became more like, again, return to play. So when I did return to both, I was like, yes, I missed soccer, I missed lacrosse, I missed running, I missed all of this. So the more I think about it, the more I think that's really interesting. It basically was forced to put on pause because- well, to, to your point with that, yeah. like you had a long pause, but I think yeah. with the kids today, like they're, they're, they don't ever have a pause, ever. They're right. so overscheduled. Like I have kids that come, from school then they do like a lesson with me and then they're off to their next practice like three things in a row right after mm -hmm. school but they leave school and they're not even home until eight o'clock at night you know and yeah. eating dinner on the run right and, and they don't they like some some if, if you talk to some of my kids they're like monday nights i do this tuesday i just taught one girl i was coaching yesterday monday nights i have this practice tuesdays field hockey tuesdays i have soccer practice wednesdays i go to lacrosse thursdays i have soccer practice again and she's like telling me about her whole schedule I'm like this is crazy there's no yeah. there's no free time there's no time mm -hmm. to decompress there's no time to process your thoughts about things and feelings like I mean just imagine like anybody even like an adult on like a work schedule if you're like super busy you get into this mm -hmm. mode where you're just like I just need to get it done and you're just like going mm -hmm. there, going there going there and you don't stop to think about anything you know and yeah. you need to that time to decompress process rest your body you know and and mm -hmm. and have like i mean you got a you got a big chunk of time to think about that stuff you know but i think yeah. that's a good point for our younger athletes who don't ever have time to process their experience and and their bodies are being you know i mean it's good to get exercise but we should be reasonable and i think there's like a yeah. fomo for parents like we're gonna miss out like if, if we don't get our lesson in then my kid's not gonna have a good game this weekend you know, or, or we, like the coach will say they really need to work on this. And, and then the parents get like, start signing them up for all this like extra training. And I'm not saying the extra training is bad. You know, I'm just saying you have to, you have to, you know, measure what you have going on. If you are playing multiple sports and doing multiple activities, like how much is reasonable for you to add on? Or if you mm -hmm. really want to add something on, maybe you should consider taking something off their plate. Right. Yes. I think that's, I think that's like a huge, huge point where, you know, if you do want to do all that, like, let's say it's a soccer player. If you do want to do all that additional training for soccer, like that's where you do have to maybe like supplement and decide, well, you're like really at, you know, at the line, <laughs> you can't cross the line of like burnout and just overly scheduled, which yes, they are definitely so scheduled. But that's where I do think it, you know, it's important to, to, to reflect and like take a look at your schedule and take a look at your goals and see how they match up. Um, so 
yeah, I think my pause was really too long. <laughs> <Well depressing. laughs> and then, and then on the converse side, I don't, I don't know how much pausing they're getting. And, you know, in terms of exercise, like, you know, everyone knows you need recovery and rest days, but I just wonder how much they're getting. I've actually had to turn players away because I'm like, you need a rest day. <laughs> no, you're not going to come train with me today. You need to go chill. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people don't have one. <laughs> especially during a school sports season because they'll it have blows my mind friends. i know it's i need rest days <laughs> i know <laughs> so um well i think we've covered a lot of topics um before we head out do you want to um, leave us with any final thought or a piece of advice or a recommendation for parents uh, i just think you know as the athlete i think put your phone down and set really specific goals. I think goal setting and, and visualization are really helpful. So I think, you know, when, when you sit down and take that time to really, like I'm looking at my personal goals right now, I'm not gonna say them out loud, but I like look over and I'm like, oh my gosh, it says personal goals. Like, cool. Okay. Stick to workout program. But, um, How's that going? you know, it's going, it's going great. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out right before this, <laughs> but, um, you know, when you, when you write out, when you take the time to reflect and, and think about what's important to you and what's calling you and you write it down and you, and you look at it every day and, you know, you become more in tune with what you're passionate about. Um, it can become more clear to you when something doesn't fit those goals and it, and when something doesn't fit your goals and you're just putting in more time and effort, it can actually be very harmful. So that's where, in my opinion, that's where burnout comes from and I also think burnout <clears throat> is probably a whole another conversation but it's hard to recognize I actually used to burn out a lot when I was the first couple of years of extra cross training I was not taking off days like just my specific experience with working coaching I was not taking off days at all I would just want to grow the company so much and so fast that if someone wanted to train I would go do it and I'm sure you, you can test it. Like, this is a lot on our body standing, right? Like we're like doing the motion and, um, we're out on the field. It's, and we, we both are very passionate, put a lot into our work. I mean, you obviously inspire me. So, I mean, recognize that again, when the additional time, effort, commitment, energy, physical, like physicality that you're putting in don't match your goals. That's where it's kind of like a red flag. Like, okay, well then why am I putting in that time and, mm -hmm. and those workouts and those commitments. And, um, if they don't, if they don't match my long-term goals. So I think goal setting is like the very first, you know, reflection and goal setting is what you should be doing as the athlete. And I think, um, you know, as, as a parent, I think it's important to do it together. Um, you know, this is what I want. And, you know, I, I thankfully work with so many great parents that I don't, I don't have many problem parents or any at all. And if I do, I would, I would have no problem saying, you know, like you, you, you're not giving your daughter like what they, what they need and deserve and they're overscheduled and overtrained, but, you know, sit down, take the time to figure out what you want and what you want to work towards. And I think everything will become easier from there. And don't feel like a quitter. <laughs> don't like, don't you're, don't, you're not a quitter if you, if you decide against something, right? Like, I, I don't know why that was in my head. Like, I, I'm not a quitter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop playing. Like I'm committed to it. And I do think, I, sorry, now I'm railing, but I do think like um, when I was playing club, like 2000, what was that? Like 2010, 2009, it's a lot different now. I think now I would not have been able to do that. I think with just like the expectations are higher for, for both programs and, like you said, like the scheduling, I just, so figure out what's important to you, write it down, talk about it. And then it will, it will become more clear and easier to let things go when you do. I like what you said about, you know, and I want to emphasize that just in case people who are listening missed it, like taking yeah. time, like mm -hmm. this isn't something you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down now and figure it out. Like right. with my pen and paper in this moment, <laughs> you know, this conversation with your kids could be, or, or if you're an athlete listening, this conversation in your own mind with yourself could be something that goes on for like a year, a year. Yeah. like really trying to like soul search and figure out what you enjoy and pay attention at practice to like, 
you know, how, how you're feeling when you're there and, and where your heart is, you know? So, so yeah. don't think that it's like an overnight decision or a, a decision you make in a week and don't put yourself in a position where it's going to be a decision you have to make in a week because right. you haven't thought of it. And now your coaches are really putting the pressure on and you have to pick something and you're not ready to do it. You know, that's why it's so important to have this conversation, you know, when they're younger and when kids are that 12, 13 year, you know, they're like seventh, eighth grade, I would say like seventh grade is a great time to start this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. um, when the kids are that age, you know, not, not having that say, not, not having that can be detrimental and not listening to your kids can be detrimental because they are figuring it out. They are telling you like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's better for parents to listen and kind of go along with your kids a little bit than it is. And, and as a parent, you can see like they're having a bad experience because their coach is terrible. Like you can see right. things maybe that they can't see. So I'm not saying there's no other factors to consider, but right. just listen to your kids because overall they have a good, a better handle on it than you would think they do. Um, so my, my recommendation for people I'll leave off is this, that um, you have to be okay with wherever your kid is. You know, my, my brother, he could have been a phenomenal D1 college soccer player. He liked to do other stuff. He wanted, and when he went to college, he played, he played D3 at Stevenson, he had an awesome career and he tailgated at the lacrosse games in the spring and had a good time as a college student, you know, because like he knew that he didn't want to be like hardcore soccer all the way through. He had other things that he wanted to commit his time to. Um, and he was a great athlete in a lot of sports and me and my sister, we were like D one all the way, you know? And, and I think that like when you're younger and you're making the decision of what to do, you have to really gauge the mentality of the player. Like for some players playing in house in three different sports, not competitive recreation is fine. Playing mm -hmm. just high school is fine. Or playing for like maybe some less committed lower level club teams. Cause you still want to play more than just more than just a one season or you want to be a little bit more committed but you want to do more than one thing so you play at a lower level so you can do everything and all the coaches realize that players are doing other sports and they're cool with it you know and then it you should be if you fall in any of those categories or your kid falls in any of those categories like be okay with it it's totally cool you don't mm -hmm. have to be some like amazing like right. crazy d1 athlete because in 10 years from now you're going to be like, um, like an accountant or you're going to be like a, I don't know, like a doctor. I don't know. The, the sky is the limit, but like once the kids grow up, like they're going to be working, you know, like 80% of professional athletes are broke now. And like people who play professional sports are now broke because they, they, they're like so focused on their sport and they didn't realize it was going to end one day and they're going to have to mm -hmm. need more income from somewhere else. You know, and I know like most of the kids and the, you know, the people who listen to this aren't going to be going on to play pro sports, but like eventually like this will come to an end and then right. life sets in and your kids like are going to get you, if you're an athlete listening to this or you're a parent listening to this, you're going to grow up. You're going to probably, I don't know, want to travel, experience your life. You'll meet somebody, get married, maybe have some kids or, or, or focus on your career or whatever it is that you do when you get older. But and then sports will become like a for fun thing for you, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, memory. I play U.S. national team, professional soccer player. I coach soccer now. I play soccer for fun, like pick up on Tuesday nights and in a Sunday adult league, you know, like, and I'm working, you know? So like these decisions that you're making now, they are going to influence your future, your kid's future, but there's a future past that, you know? Right. And it's more important to figure out, like to just be okay with whatever, whatever level of interest you have, because if you don't play for that top lacrosse team and, and go for like, go for the gold, like if you don't do that, like you're still gonna in 10, 15 years, like have a job and like be a grown up. you know, like mm -hmm. this isn't like the be all end all decision of your life. There's so much more to develop right. as a person and like for your kid, maybe the best experience is to be able just to have fun in sports and enjoy their childhood and be happy, you know, right. and, and, you know, get some physical exercise and then go on to do whatever they're going to do. 
Now, if you have a kid that's like very, very competitive um, and they're very competitive in more than one sport and they like that and they want to continue with that, I think that's where the harder decisions come in, you know, and that's where we talked about like, you know, 12, 13 years old, you start having that conversation and start to figure out where you're going to put your focus and it's better to put your focus so you can flourish in that sport than try to manage high levels at multiple sports. And we already talked about all that stuff, but I think that like the thing I would leave people with is like, first, just be like, just be okay with wherever your kids are, whatever they're communicating to you at whatever level they want to play, you know, Mm -hmm. and then, and then be, be okay if they just want to play for fun. And if Mm -hmm. they want to play more competitively, that's when you need to do some of the things that we talked about. Yeah. I think that's really helpful to kind of make it clear and helpful. Well, hopefully people who listen to this will also find it helpful and give them some ideas for how to approach things with their kids. Um, and of course, if anyone has any questions, they can email you at edge lacrosse training or me with champion soccer training. Be happy to, um, to continue this conversation. And I'm looking forward to our next one, Kara. Me too. So many Good fun job. topics to talk about. So many, we could, we could go on forever. <laughs> Why now? <not? laughs> Thanks so much for coming on today. This was super fun. Oh, thank you for having me.